Hi, my name is Diane. I work for Legat Security, and today I will be doing a tutorial on IP Snitch. All right, after we have logged into our Legat Security Suites login page, we are welcomed with a selection of the different applications in our suite that we can be able to have access to. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the IP Snitch application, and so therefore I'm going to select the IP Snitch radio button, and then I'm going to select the Select App button to be able to take us to that application. Upon opening uh, IP Snitch, the application, uh, we get a frame that is pretty much empty. We have a little bit of a welcome, we have uh, zero targets on our system, we show an account balance in our account, Today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about our, our button menu uh, to be able to uh, navigate the system. And the first button that we have is the main menu button. The main menu button, when we select it, actually takes us back to our uh, logged in page where it brings us back to our applications. And so going back and selecting IP Snitch, we're back in our application again. The Add Target button, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in a moment, but before I do that, uh, I'll explain the others. Uh, the Cancel button, basically when you've started to uh, create a target, you can cancel out of that. Uh, our Git Manual is a written form of this tutorial. And then we have a Jump To Selection box, and this allows us to be able to jump to whatever applications that we have access to. And last but not least, the logout button allows you to log out of the uh, entire suite altogether. So back to the add target button. This is the main engine of IP Snitch. And so selecting add target, we come up with a form that uh, allows us to be able to create a fake email. This can be either generated by yourself by typing in a, a from and a to and a subject and content, or you can use some of our prefabricated um, spoof email names with uh, domains and a spoof subject, which will bring up content based on that subject. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to select a spoof name called billing and a spoof domain at bellsouth.net and I'm going to send this to uh, an email address that I've previously used um, to be able to test the system and demonstrate it to for you. Then we can select a subject and we have an array of subjects here that we can choose from and I'm going to talk about, the, uh, I'm going to send the new Trojan virus information and notice how the content of the email actually comes up. Uh, pretty convenient opportunity here. If you were to type in your own subject content uh, you are limited to 500 characters, so keep that in mind. We're going to send this uh, email out, and notice how now we have on our record the target email, which was test email at legat.com, from the spoof address we created, billing at bellsouth.net. This message hasn't been read yet, so it is still waiting for a response, and it is waiting on the target to be able to read that email address. And then, of course, the message sent is the time and the date that we sent this. Okay, we are waiting for the recipient to open up their email to see if indeed uh, they've gotten that. We can go ahead and open our email browser. And sure enough, we've received that email, billing at bellsouth.net. And notice how the from address is our spoof address. And of course, our subject is the new Trojan virus. And the to address is, of course, the target in which we uh, chose to send that to. And the content is that prefabricated content that we had, um, had generated from our site. Going back to our application, we're going to refresh our page, and we do that by selecting Refresh and Update. 
And after the recipient has opened their email, we notice here that our message has now been read by giving a date and a time rather than saying waiting on target. Also, the status has changed uh, in this particular box too from waiting on the target to now you're capable of uh, getting a report and so the report is now ready for purchase. Now we are ready to purchase a report. In order to do so, we must select the row item in, that, is, uh, that has a report ready for purchase available to us and then use the drop down box to select purchase report. Take into consideration that if your account balance does not have enough uh, balance to be able to pay for this report, then you will be sent to your account in order to be able to uh, add more funds to, to your account. In this case, we have enough to cover our report, so we're going to go ahead and purchase the report through the drop-down box. Notice now that our row has changed. Our status has changed from purchase report to now the report is available. We can select the row where the uh, report is available and select from the drop down box send report. And what this will do is this will send the report to your email address that you have uh, on account. Okay, as the sender of the email, I've opened up my email account and I do indeed find the data collected from IP Snitch, this email that has the report uh, that I had purchased. And then uh, notice that we have the target's email address, the target's IP address, the uh, target's browser, uh, the target's operating system, and the target's estimated location. Uh, it's a roundabout location. And then also their ISP information. And so that is our report. That's the report that we uh, make available to you uh, when you purchase it. We also have a link that will lead us to uh, logging into the system and being able to view the, in Google Maps the location of the individual. But since we are already uh, logged into our account, we're going to go ahead and simply select the row and use the drop down box again and this time we're going to select view map and we get a, a satellite view of the, the general location of the IP address that we just found and like uh, Google Maps we're able to pan in and out to get a more direct location of where this individual is. Again, we have the target's email address, IP address, their browser, their operating system, and their, their general location. From this point, we can go back to uh, the main page of our IP snitch. We can create additional targets. We can delete targets um, that have already produced a report. And uh, just another note, you notice that the account balance has been deducted for the purchase of that report. In order to delete a record uh, on our page here, we can again use our drop down selection and we can delete the selected item. If we had multiple items, we could choose to select all of the items if, or unselect all of the items and whatever is selected, if we do select delete selected, then they will be able to uh, delete all of those items that are selected. Additionally, we would be able to uh, go to IP snitch, PC211, port snitch, and tattletale based on your available access for each of the applications. I want to thank you for uh, viewing our tutorial for IP snitch and have a good day.